divorced men of Reddit. What moment with your former wife made me think, yup, I'm asking this girl to divorce me. Story one. She let me know she was pregnant and wanted my permission to tell all her girlfriends during a girl's night out. Since I knew there was no possible way it was my child, she was also unknowingly admitting to having an affair. I can math and she can't. It was with her boss. Lawyered up the next day and he ate her alive in court. I got primary custody of our child we already had and child support and a sheriff's notice that she had to vacate my home in 30 days. I never knew she could be that stupid. Story 2. When my stepdaughter became a teenager, my ex ramped up the nutso. She had always been an impatient, angry screamer of a parent. But as my stepdaughter became a young woman, my ex just went crazy with envy or something. I know lots of moms have a hard time with teenage daughters, but their base level patience is so much better than my ex was. Threats of cutting hair in middle of night while daughter slept, pulling hair, slapping face, ridiculing in front of her friends, swinging something that missed and put a hole in the wall. I was out with the kids. Story 3. My wife was around Les. Les had to be free to live her life, go out with her friends. More often than not, she would call me to pick our daughter up from daycare after promising to pick her up, have some girl time. Just tell her I'm working late or not feeling well. She always had something better to do. The kids were old enough to know better. I went to pick our daughter up one day. When they called her name, she came running over until she saw it wasn't mom. Again, slumped her shoulders, slowly walked over to ask, what's her excuse this time? That was the breaking point. Told her to get out. Even helped pay her security deposit to get her out. Story 4. I was working on a mother-daughter scrapbook as a Christmas present for her. Was going through her Google Photos account looking for pics of them together. Came across a selfie she took with some dude laying on her. Confirmed her second affair. Knew it was over the moment I saw it. That has messed up me up pretty good. Story 5. We flew across the country for her sister's wedding. She didn't say a word to me the entire time since we had parked at the airport. Once we landed at our destination, we walked to baggage claim. Absolute silence proceeding for several hours now. At the carousel, I picked up her bag when she took it out of my hand and calmly stated, None of my family knows you're here. I told them I came alone. She walked out of the airport and left me there. Narcissistic personality disorder made for some really fun scenarios. Story 6. During the last year and a half of our marriage, she became extremely psychologically abusive. She was a narcissist, controlled my every move, would isolate me refused physical contact, I was just an extension to her life, was not allowed to talk to any female, was not allowed to hang out with any friends, or she would ignore me for up to five days at a time. Double standards everywhere. Verbal abuse and the list can continue, but it hurts to think about. The last straw for me was when she threatened to terminate me because I came home from work late, even though she knew I would be home late. It was just a little too late for her, and she also threatened to hit me the same day. This was the second time this happened, and I talked with several people at work about it, and they suggested that I run. I had texts of the threats on my phone and contacted a lawyer that same week. She agreed to sign since I told her I would take severe legal action if she didn't. Thankfully, no children, and it was a clean divorce, and I'm happily divorced. Story 7. When she presented a picture of our four-year-old daughter and me, laying next to each other on the couch, watching Blue's Clues to our marriage counselor as evidence of my inappropriate conduct around our kids. Thank God he saw right through that nonsense immediately and told her to knock it off. Edit. There is no Joe. Hash not me Steve edit too. Many asked, so here's the deal. We've been divorced almost five years now. The process wasn't fair, but that wasn't really my ex's fault. No allegations of child abuse or misconduct were brought up against me during the proceedings, so that was good. They wouldn't have flown for a minute in court anyway. Our kids are older now and every day are becoming better equipped to see and understand the difference between what's reasonable and right, and what's simply just insane. And it's not working out all that well for their mother, who hasn't changed her MO much, if at all, since we parted ways. So it goes. I'm happily remarried now to a woman with kids of her own kids, who were friends and schoolmates of my kids, before she and I even got to know each other. They're all our kids now. Life is good. No more shenanigans. Story 8. I used to love to do chores for her because she loved being taken care of. When she stopped noticing, it started hurting. Then one day, I made a bench for our entryway out of Barnwood. Took about 40 hours of work. She walked in the house after work that day and sat her purse on it and proceeded to start the fight where she told me that she was mad. She got married to me. She stormed out of the house, grabbing her purse. Never noticed the bench was there. I knew then, but I think she already knew. Story 9. When I, as the only earner in the house, was denied buying a new pair of work boots in December because she needed the money to buy vaccines for the puppies. She bred dogs as a hobby. I was a framing carpenter in Ohio. My current work boots were toast holes in both. No soles. I needed them. Her puppy vaccine story was nonsense. Her hobby was dogs, 
but she was a pro at popping pills. That's what she needed the money for. I was done with her by March. Story 10. When, after being in Afghanistan for eight months, May 02 Nov 02, she was missing. Had my car. Finding two random women with kids and pets living in the apartment I paid for. The electricity off. No money in my bank account. A pay advance authorized by my commander. And a friend telling me to go easy on her because she was five months pregnant with his kid. Oh, and he had had heart surgery to remove some kind of cysts from his heart just before I left. He was 23, had a pacemaker, and basically half a heart. If I scared him, he could pass away. I'd say that was the moment. Story 11. I found out she cheated on me, and upon me confronting her to discuss it, she manipulated me into thinking she was to the sky. Then she admitted the manipulation. Done. She may have once been a nice person. That's all gone now. Edit. Forgot to mention I found out because she had left her FB open with a conversation about her pregnancy scares to a friend. We hadn't had close relationship in a, a bit more than a month. Story 12. Not a wife, but a fiancé. Just called it off because we were house hunting, and she kept wanting to look at houses that would accommodate an extra permanent guest. Her estranged father, whom she was wanting to reinitiate ties with, but wouldn't admit to it, found out from a buddy that she was wanting me to lay out the money for the down payment, and then was going to break it off herself and fight like hell to keep the house to herself. Two years down the drain, but a lifetime of a fortunate near miss. Story 13. When I saw the text from her lover that said something to the effect of miss your cock in my peat, and I rubbed one out in the gym shower thinking of you. Bad person, never sent me texts like that in 10 years of marriage. Still have the text saved somewhere in a divorce file. This was not the first affair, but it was the one that finished it for me. Story 14. I endured a physically, emotionally, and intellectually abusive relationship for over six years with my first wife, four of which we were married. There were many, many instances that should have caused our marriage's demise. The proverbial straw that broke the camel's back, though, was eight days after I had major oral surgery. Due to a bad person medical occurrence, I had to have 28 teeth out and two holes drilled into my sinus cavities from top of the back of my gums. She and I were in a grocery store parking lot, and I asked her not to start an argument in the store because it's a small town and I was so tired of being those people. Her reaction was to backhand me in the mouth. Six times. Or at least I counted six times because I'm pretty, oh, no sure I lost consciousness. I just remember waking up when we were pulling into our driveway while she's freaking out because my face is against the window and blood is coming from my mouth like a fountain. Story 15. I was at work and got a call from my grandparents that she had our dog, Zoe, that was laying on the bed with her. We were separated before that for other reasons, but that's when I ponied up a few grand and went to an attorney to file. I really miss her. The dog, I mean. Story 16. I left for work at 6 a.m. and forgot to unplug the toaster. When I arrived home at 6 p.m., I was given the everything you've ever done to pour out the water me off speech just for leaving the toaster plugged in. I asked her what she did all day that prevented her from unplugging it herself. Another I'm an unpleasant person speech. I said something to the effect of quit acting like your flipping mother. She threw the cat at me. A cat, she threw a flipping cat at me. Edit words and such edit to Scuba Steve went on to live with me after the official separation and divorce. Story 17. When she asks me to take the kids on some errands, has kept me celibate for months saying she is not romantic now. And once I leave, invite some guy over to tongue lash her for 45 minutes and then drop a load inside her in the bedroom without a condom. All on the day before Father's Day. Thanks, Amy. Not divorced yet. This happened last week. Her life is in such shambles. I am not even mad. Story 18. For the first one, I was working late in the daycare calls and asked if I'm picking up my kids. Left work to go get them. When I got home, she was gone. Didn't hear anything from her for two weeks. For the second one, the third time I bailed the house out of foreclosure because she wouldn't pay the bills. Even though there was money in the accounts to cover it, I closed the account, handed her cash for the mortgage, packed a bag my kids and left. Story 19. We had a trial separation and lived apart for a month. During this time, I vented off some of my frustrations to one of my best friends. Come to find out, said friend was flipping my wife behind my back. They both attempted to manipulate my emotions so that I wouldn't think anything suspicious. But goddamn, my intuition always had my back. Always trust your gut, folks, even when your head isn't where it should be. Story 20. We met and spent the first seven years of our married life on the West Coast, then moved east. Five years later, I took a job back on the West Coast, but it was the middle of the school year, so I went out ahead and lived on my own until everyone could join me. Things hadn't been very good between us for a while, but I hadn't articulated it to her, or even myself, beyond vague feelings of dissatisfaction. One weekend, out there on my own, I decided to take a day and drive to one of my favorite towns, a town in which I had lived long before I knew her, a town we had visited often while married. It was late afternoon, was about to head back to my hotel, 
when I realized that I could visit a particular beach that had special meaning to me from my earlier life there. I stopped at a convenience store, grabbed a Grolsch like I used to drink on that beach, and drove out there. Hiked out to a specific spot I remembered, sat down, popped the beer, and looked out over the ocean. And it hit me that I hadn't done that in over 20 years. Whenever we'd visit the area, I'd suggest stopping at the beach, but she wasn't interested and would always veto the idea. I'm sure reading this, it seems like the tiniest thing, but it was the catalyst for me realizing just how completely dissatisfied I was with our relationship. I think from the time I sat down, I knew it was over within maybe 10 minutes. Just sitting there, sipping my beer, looking at the ocean. Edit. Rip inbox and my first gold. Thanks, Redditors. I seriously thought this would be one of those I'm late to the thread so no one will read it posts. Thank you for all the incredibly kind words. Grolsch is indeed a Dutch beer. It can be had in distinctive green bottles with hinged, resealable ceramic caps. I chose it because when I had lived in that place before and had headed out to that specific beach with friends, I'd always bring Grolsch. Story 21. Preface. We were doing a trial separation. She moved into the spare bedroom of our apartment. Divorce had been thrown around, but we still spent time together and slept together. I wasn't seriously considering divorce, but rather counseling, etc. Up until the day I came home from work at the same time, I came home every day, and she was in her room being messed up by some random guy she met on Tinder. She had not told him she was married. I kicked him out of the apartment and made it clear to her I would be moving out as soon as possible. Edit. Must add that she expressed interest in counseling as well, and that we discussed ground rules for the separation, one of which was, do not fudge other people. Edit 2. Thanks for all the love. For those asking, I moved out because I couldn't afford the apartment on my own. I didn't kick the guy's peach, but I did tell him while punching the door that he had three minutes to get out of my apartment. I said if he wasn't out in three minutes, I was going to break down the door and it wouldn't be to shake hands. Proud of that line from enraged me. Usually I'm not very articulate when angry. He was out in a little over two minutes. Story 22. Fifteen years in, and I find texts on her phone. Completely blindsided. No clue she had it in her to cheat. Told me it was just texting. Begged for forgiveness. I caved. A month later, checked the phone bill to find that it never stopped. Confronted her again. Cue more begging and more denial on my part that she would let the life we had built go down in flames. This went on for a few months. So many promises. One night, I caught her on the phone when she thought I had left. Suddenly, it's not just texts. Sometimes it was phone calls, too. Just a friend she could talk to that she let things go too far with. Promised to break all contact. Swore it was never physical. Then I found emails. She detailed things that made me sick to read, but also included descriptions of his house. She broke finally, but swore it was all just in the line of duty. That's how she met, you see? Visiting nurse service, and this guy was a client. Promised she was done. Loved me, you see? No chance she was going to let 15 years go like that. I wasn't buying it anymore, though. She announced she was going out one night with a work friend. Promised they were only going to the bar, then she'd be home. Maybe late, but not too late. She had taken over her own phone account by then, but wasn't bright enough to understand that Google Latitude was still showing me where she was, and I wasn't about to show my hand. She kissed me goodbye and beelined right for his house, and was there until the wee hours of the morning. Once I knew where she had headed, I called her dad and my best friend to keep me from doing anything dumb. I will love them both forever, for keeping me calm while my world went flipping insane all around me. My father-in-law offered to stay with the kids and wait for her to get home. Around 3 a.m. while couch surfing my buddy's place, she sent me a nasty text asking where the fudge I thought I was. I texted her a screenshot of her little GPS dot at her boyfriend's and let her know I'd be sending her some paperwork soon. Story 23. When she informed me she was cheating on me and leaving me for that guy. K, that guy was engaged. Not to her. Oddly enough, he did not break off his engagement. Edit. Wow, thought this thread was dead when I commented. I'd like to add this was six months into our marriage. Together for three years, but that last six months, she couldn't keep it together. Story 24. When we had a much-needed family trip planned to Mexico and due to a fight the week before, she told me she didn't want me to come on the trip and took my two daughters and her mother for a week. She was a stay-at-home, my mom, so I paid for the whole trip months before. As soon as I knew the plane left on time, I marched into a lawyer's office. I served her the papers the day after they got back home. Story 25. She started working at a job with people that were closer to her age, 25-30, instead of a job where her co-workers were in their late 40s, early 50s. She wanted to go out and hang out with them rather than come home and be with her family, myself, and our at the time two-year-old daughter and a godforsaken cat that she just had to have. There were a lot of other little things that added up over time, mainly her desire to drink and drive without our daughter in the car, thankfully, and four days a week of not coming home until two or three in the morning. 
and not telling a soul where she was or what she was doing. After a month of that, she said she wanted a divorce. I fought it with everything I had for three months, decided to go to counseling, where the counselor asked her, ex-wife in your mind in this marriage already over? After a literal five-minute silence, I had the answer I needed. Separated a week later and divorced a year later. We're still civil for our daughter's sake. But I will say that after the initial shock of actually going through a divorce after us both proclaiming to do whatever it takes and never getting a divorce, I will say I'm much happier now. I was able to save up and buy a house for my daughter, and I, which I never would have been able to do had I stayed married. Story 26. My son was watching Netflix on her phone with me and her boyfriend text her. It was 12 at night and he said he missed her and couldn't wait to see her again. Typical, I know. I confronted her, and she denied and said that her friend's daughter was texting my son. My son is three, the daughter in question was two, and barely speaking. Yeah, that was time to go! Story 27. When the cops showed up and arrested me while I was washing dishes, found out after being taken to the station that she had claimed that I had been beating on her and my five-year-old son, was acquitted in court a month or so later. The situation was so messed up that the cops actually testified on my behalf. Story 28. I'd found evidence of potential cheating. Despite this, I still was willing to work on things. I confronted her about her feelings towards me, not the cheating. When I point-blank asked her if she was interested in counseling or trying to work things out, she said no. That was the first time it would have been better to have stuck with it. There was a tumultuous time after that where we flip-flopped and were trying to work things out. Sort of she complicated things. I had broached the cheating with her, and we made rules during our maintenance period. One of which was that she was no longer to have contact with her friend she was cheating with. I ended up finding out that she was still Facebook friends with him. When I calmly explained why this would hurt me, she turned it around that I was the bad guy. I started living with a friend at this point. During my drunken, half-sobbing tirade where I explained everything to him, I finally realized that I don't want to be with this woman anymore. She doesn't love, respect, or care for me at all, and I deserve those things. Moved out, moved on, and have since found a wonderful woman that I will marry in April. Even though I figured I would never get married again. Edit. I got hurt. It sucked. It sucked really bad. I never expected to get a divorce. I took some time to work on myself and address the mistakes that I made in my marriage and past relationships. I ended up finding a person who 100% is in sync with me and communicates like a mature adult. She is super smart and helps me through my emotions as I help her through hers. I did a complete 180 on marriage. It wasn't a struggle, it feels right. I thought long and hard after I had decided to get married. I wanted to make sure I was not making the same mistakes again. I believe I found my true partner, and each day gives me more reasons to believe that to be true. Story 29 the moment I realized that her excuses for her cheating with multiple other guys were all about blaming me and demolishing my spirit so she could continue doing so while I fully supported her financially. It was the click that I needed to lawyer up in GTFO. She had almost broken me, but I finally saw the only regret she had was getting caught. Story 30. I always refused to raise my voice during arguments, which usually made her crazier and scream louder. After one such argument, during which our three-year-old daughter was playing upstairs, she started coming down at the same time her mother was storming up the stairs like a child of comparable age. Our daughter was in the way, and her mother got in her face and screamed, God, I flipping hate you, move! Of course, my daughter came to me, hurt. That was the moment I decided it was over. Edit. This was 13 years ago. My daughters are now 16 and 12. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way that, particularly in that day and age, family courts were seriously skewed towards the favor of the mother in many cases, unless there was proof of serious neglect, candy abuse, or physical close relationship abuse. The girls, I believe, are fairly well adjusted and doing okay. Their mother changed in regards to her direct dealings with them, however continued and still uses them as a way to hurt me whenever she sees an opportunity. I've taken her to court for custodial interference, which is punishable up to 30 days in jail and a $1,000 fine, and they slapped her on the wrist with not so much as an admonishment. It's messed up, but I do the best to keep an eye on the situation and try to give them as much stability as possible when they're around me, so they have an idea of what normal is. Story 31. Me and my ex were always having ups and downs. Cutting up my clothes when I was out with friends. Cutting my hair when I was asleep. Random violence and screaming fits. The usual, we did the normal things couples were supposed to do, and it seemed to prolong the episode for a time. We bought a house, for example. Well, after we had the house, the next thing we needed was a cat. She loved it very much when it was a kitten, but as it grew up, it became more independent. It's a cat, duh. And she couldn't take this and became aggressive towards it. I remember walking in one day and she picked up the cat and threw it up in the air. It bounced off of the ceiling and then I threw her peach out of the house, bouncing her cow of the curb. I still have the cat. Story 32. 
My best friend was in Air Force stationed in South Korea and got married right before he left. After about six months, he flies her out to visit. First night she was there, she would go outside to breathe more and more. She left her phone and he looked at it when someone texted her. She was texting two guys on base asking, Do you want to me when my husband goes to work? He got out of Dodge when she went home. Turns out she was cheating on him the whole time he was gone and was going to text him she wanted a divorce anyway. Edit. I realized I said Doge not Dodge. I can't change it because it's funny and comments wouldn't make sense lol edit. Forgot to add that she tried to spin it back on him and was pissed he looked at her phone and didn't trust her. Story 33. I could say it was the day I found thee with a doctor from her hospital, but no. I knew even before that, I am a widower and visited the cemetery twice a year to visit my first wife's grave. First wife's brother asked me to send him a picture of the headstone as he wanted to post something on social media on the anniversary of her death to say something in her memory. I happily obliged and sent him the pic. My second wife gets home later that night and is pissed at me because she had to find out on social media that some other woman had her last name. I was dumbfounded as she knew I was married before, knew that she had my last name, never mind that other woman had the name first, and yet somehow found a way to make yet another thing about her. Everything was always about her and apparently nothing was off limits to her narcissism. That was the moment I realized this is not someone I could be with every day. Story 34. She had lost her job again after quitting a decent one because she didn't get along with her boss. Anyways, a few months go by and I'm doing everything. Cooking, laundry, dishes, yard work, etc. I'd ask the kids, what does mom do all day? And they said she plays on the computer all day. So the final straw came when I came home from work and had to wash dishes so I could make dinner. Dinner is made so I tell family it's ready. She comes to get a plate and serves herself first instead of our youngest child who was four at the time and couldn't serve himself. As I watched this unfold, it dawned on me. If I'm going to do all the work, I might as well do it by myself or find a partner to share the load with because she clearly didn't want to be on my team. Edit to those mentioning depression. Yes, she was and maybe still is. She was on meds for it and we went to counseling after the birth of one of our kids and she had postpartum depression. At this time, she stepped out on our marriage with at least three guys. I finally got proof with hidden caller ID and a voice activated tape recorder hidden under our bed. Yep, gotta hear them having close relationship. Long story, but we stayed together. IDK if the counseling helped or not. I also need to add that she was never good with money. Blew a small inheritance in record fashion. She would give me money for joint bills, and I was handing it back over so she could put gas in her car or she had bill of hers. One year we got a nice tax refund and she promptly tells me she owes her stepdad $2,000. WTF still stayed. In short, my earlier response was to OP's question, and the edit is some background, so you know that this was something that had been building for years. Story 35. She started doing meth, got arrested by the police, and got caught cheating with her dealer for sweets. They are both in rehab, and I'm trying to manage the disaster she left behind. My three kids have taken it the hardest. They don't understand why she went to jail or rehab and are very upset that they cannot see her. I can never go back. She has ruined me and destroyed my kids. I am so lonely I lost my best friend, wife, and soulmate to meth. Story 36. Dunno, might have been when the doctor told me I had a STI and I hadn't had close relationship with anyone apart from her for many years and was completely clean of disease beforehand. Oh yeah, and a couple weeks later when that pregnancy test came back positive and we'd been using rubber bands since the baby was born. A bit of a clue, anyway. Story 37. The day she took me out to Chili's, bought me an El Nino, large higher volume alcohol margarita, and ended up asking me if I would let her spend time with a guy, one she was with when we were separated once before and offered to do the cleaning and taking care of the house more thoroughly in return. I laughed and said, yeah, we're going to just need to divorce now. We're currently in the process of divorce. P.S. We have five kids. Story 38. Sometimes when my ex and I used to fight, she would decide that she wasn't going to go to some function or honor plans we had previously made. Sometimes very last minute, like hanging out with friends, dinner with my family, etc. For example, we got into some argument and she decided to not go to my only sister's wedding. BTW, the wedding was that day. A year later, she did the same thing during a fight. She threatened me again, telling me that she decided to not go with me to Texas for a reunion with some of the guys I served in the Marines with. I didn't fight at this time and just said okay. Several days later, she tried to renege on her threat and actually tried to turn it around on me, saying how mean I was for not wanting her to come with me. I told her that I was actually relieved that she wasn't going. I could hang out with my friends that I hadn't seen since I got out, and it would be nice to not have to worry about her crazy, insecure drama. That realization that I was going to be happier without her was the moment I knew we were done. Story 39. Wasn't married, but about one month away from marrying. We worked together at the same job for about a year, but she was first shift and I was second. We both had weekends off so we could and did things on the weekend. We had got everything paid for and were set. One weekend, actually on my birthday, 
I went to get a haircut before we went out for the night. I weirdly noticed this one car in the parking lot of our apartments. Didn't think too much as there was a cow ton of cars that would come and go. She had gone up to a casino with her mom the previous night and stayed overnight. That wasn't uncommon as they were both huge gamblers. I got back and did some cleaning and she walked in. She looked at me and threw her ring on the table and said, We need to talk. I think I like Joe more now and decided I want to be with him. I don't need the ring and you can cancel the wedding. It all clicked that car I seen was Joe's. She didn't go up to the casino with her mom but with Joe instead. Even more messed up up as I called her mom to see how close they were to home and she covered for her daughter. I then come to find out her friend Joe was an ex-lover who also broke up her last engagement. He was always trying to befriend me too and act like we were best friends. I have never felt less of a man, more ashamed and hurt then when this happened. I sacrificed a lot for her. I was there doing anything and everything for her and her family when her dad very slowly passed away. And she ends up treating me like a pet she could get rid of when she got bored. I still can't remember a few months of time after that happened. I was in a bad place. Edit. I just realized I never finished this up. It took a while to get my head straight. My best friend of over 20 years, to me a brother and family, helped me out so much. He made sure I was going to be okay and took me out to blow off steam. We took an awesome trip to some fun peach spots with a few other people. I owe him so much for the help. My family really helped too. I ended up meeting my fiancé now about six months after I had that cow happen. We have been together for over five years and we will be celebrating our first daughter's birthday on June 29th. Amazing what has happened since then. My one advice is don't ever give up or think you are worthless. You are worth everything to somebody out there no matter what. I can say I am almost embarrassed by how I reacted back then, lol. Edit again. I never expected this to get this much attention. Thank you everybody for the kind words. And yes, my ex and I were together for about four years. I will say after I met my new fiancé now, about a month into dating, I got a new job and got to say good riddance to the last of my ex. One of the greatest things ever! The oddest thing too was my best friend who stuck with me actually had his dad pass away my last week at work. My last day, I had told them I needed to leave at 3 p.m. to go help my best and his family with last-minute wake and funeral stuff. They told I can't leave and they won't let me. After how my ex got everybody there to somehow feel really bad for her about leaving me, and I got left with people telling me how they feel bad for her, I just dropped my cow on the ground and left. I remember the supervisor saying you are going to get into lots of trouble and I looked at her dead in the eyes and go, What? Am I going to get fired? And just started laughing on my way out. Story 40. My wife at the time told me that she had called a local radio station, which often discusses hardships that military families go through, and sometimes gives away $1,000 to a family in need of help. She said that she informed the radio station of my deployment, and how I didn't come back the same, and she told them about our daughter, two months premature and only eight months old at the time, who had numerous health problems. My wife explained to me that the radio station hadn't given away the $1,000 in quite a few weeks, so they were going to give us $10,000 for her telling such a heartfelt story. She called me while I was at work to tell me what had happened, and I was really excited. Asked my sensioic to help me draw up a savings plan and figure out which debts should be paid off first, etc. Things were looking up. I get home that night, and rather than being greeting with an enthusiastic hug, she points to the loft and mouths, Not now, I'm on the phone. So I go upstairs and wait for her to finish. While I was waiting, I could hear her saying things like, Yeah, I can get those papers to you, and no problem. I can have that ready by tomorrow. Hmm. Maybe they need identification and proof of my deployment or something. Whatever. Fast forward to later that night, and like usual, I'm having trouble sleeping. I decide to get on the computer and listen to the podcast from the radio show. After a few searches, I find it and start listening to it. This is where my blood starts to boil. She told the DJs that she was a single lady living on her own, and that her sister married a Marine, and they had a child named Marie, our daughter's middle name. She goes on to say that Marie is now in her custody after the Marine husband me, sort of, was terminated in Afghanistan, and the mother, her IRL single sister with no kids v. Jockey, was terminated in a car wreck, and Marie was now my wife's responsibility. Hundreds of people called in and offered to help, many of which owned business and wanted to offer things like baby supplies or completely furnishing a nursery for her. Literally thousands of people had heard this nonsense fabricated story, including some of my coworkers. It was the radio station she was on the phone with, and they were asking her to provide death certificates and a birth certificate for Marie, which is why I was shooed away. Story 41. When she cried poor to me over the $100, she needed to cover going to NYC so she could see friends she hadn't seen in months. She went from not going because it wasn't worth the money to walking gleefully out the door when I handed her the dollar $100. As I was laying in bed, I wondered why she had no money. I checked her favorite clothing store history. 
She was averaging spending 75% of her income on clothes and makeup. Everything fell into place for me that day. I filed after the money scavenger hunt turned up she had a boyfriend too. Story 42. I made dinner and baked a chocolate cake for her birthday. She came home that night weeping about her problems. Work is rough. Her friends are all jerks. Her parents are this and that is that, etc. I consoled her as I had every night for the past three years and tried to convince her to eat. She proceeded to lecture me on words to say to properly comfort her. When a girl says blah, you are supposed to say blah, blah, blah. And in that instant, I just ran out of fudge. It's like the needle has been on E for a while now, and the low fudge indicator has been on for months. And now, the last fumes of fudge have finally been used up. I packed up all my cow into my car, grabbed the cat, and left. I realize it's not the dramatic explosive end like most of these stories, nor does it paint me in the best light. But sometimes these things just sputter and pass away. Story 43. We were together for four years, married for a pube hair over a year, when I was working two jobs, considering a third, and she sat at home, unemployed, again, for the fifth time in a six-month period. They don't respect me, so she quit. This job isn't fulfilling, so she quit. Everybody gangs up on me, so she quit, etc., etc. Our young puppy was not taken care of. House was a mess, and I just worked anywhere from 10, 14 hours. But sure, dear, I'll walk the dog and do the dishes and get the laundry going. No problem. Watching TV or reading are difficult things to do all day. Then I call her one day from work excited that I'm getting out early. She says she can't talk right now in a hush-hush manner and a man's voice in the background. You can't talk right now? Why not? You have no job and don't do a god-oh-no thing around the house. Bad person what? Who's he? What the fudge is going on? So I'm working my banana and balls off to pay our bills and provide for us while you fudge around? I don't think so. She decides to stay with some family to take time to figure out if we want to stay together. I was so blindsided by everything that was going on and said we should talk and resolve this together. Why take time and separation to decide? Well, because this way she can fudge everyone she sees between our house and her mother's house, of course. She comes home one day because she needs clothes and puts some old random clothes in a bag, but sneakily grabbed all of her lingerie. I didn't notice until I was putting away the laundry she didn't do and noticed it was all gone. Circumflex, that was the moment I left. I didn't give a fudge anymore. I'm done. It's not worth it. The lies, manipulation, selfishness, all of it. I'm done. I'm not going to be your little bad person anymore. No more free meal ticket for you, ya unpleasant. Then, for her final power play, she did the classic, I'm suicidal, I'm an alcoholic, bipolar, close relationship addict, and went to a mental hospital. She was released in three days, diagnosed with nothing. By bad person, as much as it absolutely terminates me, I even let her keep the dog, because it would be a better life for him. She has a yard and her family's dogs that he grew up with and played with. I had to move to my parents' basement with no yard, and I work a new job on an off-shift. Now I'm moving across the country, with a better job, with a better, prettier woman, in a better town, minus a complete psychopath. Even if nobody reads this, it was slightly therapeutic to type out. Story 44. She got drunk on Christmas Eve and told me that she had been using crystal meth again, and that she would always be an addict, because it was her first love, and it was there for her when she was a teenager, and her mother passed away. She finally said she loved it more than she loved being a wife or a mother and that plenty of people lead normal lives while still being users. It crushed me. She was so hungover the next morning that she missed Christmas at my parents' house with our three-year-old son. I tried to speak to her about it for the next few weeks and she refused to acknowledge the conversation. And things finally came to a head when she started inviting a couple of known candy dealers into our home regularly and threatened to move out when I asked that she not bring them around our house or our son anymore. I told her we needed to talk, me, her, and my parents who were trying to help. She flipped out and disappeared for days, and when she tried to come home, I had her cow packed up. Story 45. There were many reasons, but this was the final straw. My grandmother was on her deathbed. My ex took this time to throw a childish fit because I ordered food that she didn't like. I realized at that point how completely miserable I was and how flipping short life is. So we divorced. She took all my money and my kids, plus child support. I've still never been happier. And every time I have to interact with her is blows my mind that we made it nine years. I guess when we were together, I was so trained to comply and overlook. I now see what an absolute toxic bully she is was. Story 46. Made an account for this. When I saw her texts to the person she was having an affair with and they were making fun of me, I actually regret the divorce to be honest. She accused me of stuff I didn't do. And I can't see my kid anymore. He was too young to remember me and I'm sure she isn't giving him a glowing opinion about me. I don't think he will ever want to know his old man. Story 47. After all the arguments, yelling at each other and talking and cross purposes, we were looking at each other and she says to me, I know that you are going to divorce me because of this, 
but I really hate you. It was the first time in a long time that I completely understood her and what she was trying to express to me. My daughter was three at the time, and over the years she said she wanted me back, but I would say, all you have to do is apologize for what you said. She never would. That's how I knew she didn't love me. Story 48. When I came to the sad realization that we were just good roommates and had been like that for years. We have been divorced for almost 10 years and she is one of my favorite people in the world. We just weren't supposed to be married. Edit first gold. Thank you, stranger. I can't wait to tell my ex that yet another good thing came of our split. Story 49. Besides the narcissism, random violence and violent outbursts, it was her strange punishments. Her last one doomed her. My crime? I forgot milk on the way home from work so she didn't talk to me. Not one word for a week. Pure bliss for a week. When she asked if I was ready to apologize, I handed her the divorce papers. Why? Because you rob me of solitude but provide me with no companionship. Story 50. When she posted on Facebook about an argument we had, and her friends gave her advice on how to get back at me, including but not limited to, poisoning me, hitting me in the face while I'm asleep, and cutting my brake lines. All of these comments were met with laughter and emojis on her part. Story 51. When she admitted to cheating on me with a coworker, this was the second time. First time was with a bunch of internet strangers, albeit at separate times. You could make the case that the second time was the second dude, but I'm talking about second admittance. But I digress. At that point, it wasn't so much me asking her as it was me getting the fudge out of Dodge. Edit. If you're out there, Michelle, I bid thee a merry fudge you. Edit 2. A period. Edit 3. To add insult to injury, she met these internet strangers on Yahoo Messenger of all places. Yahoo flipping messenger! Story 52. Went to my grandpa funeral, Disneyland after the service, flights and board were paid for by my father. She was the most ungrateful, unsupportive, whiny bad person the whole weekend. I couldn't believe it. My little sister said my entire family didn't like her or her attitude and was constantly asking why she was there. That really sank in, and at that moment I knew we were done. Don't keep her around if your family can't stand her. They probably don't like her for good reason. Story 53. Not divorced yet. Haven't fully decided it's time, but I think it's close. And my straw was when, during one of her every three-month epic meltdowns, she said, I fantasize about you just finding another girl and sleeping with her so I'll know it's over. It would be the worst thing you could ever do to me. Story 54. She said she knew it would never last when I started looking at houses out in the sticks, 20 minutes from a major city. When she could only live in the middle of a city, she actually cited the distance to Starbucks as a determining factor as to where we should live. I knew it wasn't fair to either of us when I realized that the only time I thought about her in a positive way was when we were drinking or flipping. Story 55. I didn't want a divorce when I realized her drinking was becoming a serious problem. I didn't want a divorce when she ended up comatose from liver failure. I didn't want a divorce when the hospital bills broke through the million-dollar cap. I didn't want a divorce when she came out of the coma and tried to get her life back on track. I didn't want a divorce when she became addicted to opioids. I didn't want a divorce when she became addicted to Ambien. I didn't want a divorce when her pill doctor was arrested and she couldn't get her sweets anymore. I didn't want a divorce when she started drinking again. I didn't want a divorce when I was broke, unemployed, and hopeless, and all I could think of was how to keep food in our kitchen and my son in school. It was then I realized that if she went back up north and lived in the same town as her large family, she could get the help necessary to get better, and I could reduce expenses and see our son graduate high school. The moment I said, yup, I want a divorce, was the day she left. Her brother had come down and would drive a U-Haul back up north with her and her stuff. That day she decided, and became adamant, that she was taking our only vehicle as well. We lived 13 miles from supermarkets, fast food, gas stations, etc., and 26 miles from my son's school. Not having a vehicle wasn't an option, so I stood my ground. She got so mad and we fought so hard, my son got involved, screaming at her that she can't strand us and she needed to leave right now. So she left, and I started getting back on my feet. The following year, I flew her back for her son's graduation. We were cordial, had a pretty good time, then she left. And that's the last I heard from her until the following year when I was served divorce papers. We're now divorced, I've moved, and I'm back to being confident and successful. I've talked to her once or twice since then, and I'm happier than I've ever been. Story 56. Ex-wife and I were already on a trial separation, but honestly had hoped we would get it worked out. My daughter and I moved into my parents' house while we figured things out, and Christmas Day rolls around, and she shows up to give her presents to everyone and leaves. Just really hit me that she couldn't even stick around on Christmas Day because she had more important things to do. That this wasn't going to work. Honestly, the only time as a grown man that I've ever cried. Story 57. Went to church on my birthday and saw her putting on the mask of happiness that was always shown by her to fellow churchgoers made me realize how tired I was of having to play that game with her. 
then deal with her intense anger and constant arguments at home. My birthday is supposed to be a really happy day, and I felt miserable and hollow. Called some family that day to organize a move-out party was gone four days later. Story 58. When I caught her cheating on Valentine's Day. Not that the date really matters. Edit. This was in 2013, and while at the time it was certainly like getting punched in the nuts and the heart at the same time, life has a way of moving on. And while I can't say it's all been wine and roses, I am legitimately much happier now than I ever was married to her. Story 59. It was the week of Thanksgiving, two weeks after my 40th birthday. I had resigned myself to the thought that she was cheating on me and wanted to find out. She left her iPad and I went through everything. I opened words with friends and found the chat where she was talking to the other guy about how she was going to take all my money, the house, the dogs, and my child, and move in with him. That close relationship was much better with him. Divorced six months later. Story 60. Protibakia tu bebrot lika i pradetabu. Eba kiu pradeta to pibatepu.